everyone, Norris here, and I have a new interview. It is with Lyndon Warburg, aka Mermaid Lyndon. And she's the creator of the Mermaid Lyndon Monofin, and she's a well known professional mermaid around the world. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for alerts of when I upload new content to the channel. Especially those with disabilities similar to mine. I'll be talking with Lyndon about a lot of things from how she got involved with scuba diving, free diving, how she became a mermaid, and how she came up with her trademark Mermaid Lyndon monofin that is made by Body Glove. And I hope you enjoy this video as we talk about a lot of those subjects and other things too. All right. I am joined here by Lyndon Wolber, also known as Mermaid Lyndon. Yes. So nice to be here. And I'm so excited to interview with you. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. And this is going to be part of my Road to Cozumel series. That's awesome. I've, I've dived in Cozumel. It's going to be part of my Road to Cozumel, you know, with Dive Heart. Oh, yes, yes. You had mentioned in uh, a couple of messages that you're doing this, which is going to be amazing. All right. So I make sure things are a little bit, you know, stable. Sounds good. Take your time. Because it's a little bit stable, unstable on my end. So I just want to make sure. Just want to make sure I have. All right, Lyndon. Um, how did, okay, I have some questions for you. Like, how did you become a mermaid and why? Ooh, well, how did I become a mermaid? I, when I was in my 20s, I was working in a job that was basically like a, a residence director position at the college I had gone to. And so I attended Emerson College in Boston, and I was an RA, a resident assistant all through college, and I really enjoyed it. And when I came out to my internship program my senior year here in Los Angeles, they said, hey, we really think you're a great RA, and our residence director is leaving. Do you think you would be interested in filling that position? And so before I even graduated from the college officially, I had a job offer to uh, work as their residence director. And it was a, it was a really nice position. I got housing through it. I had a salary. I had benefits. It was awesome right out of college. Um, but I really didn't enjoy working in an office. And being someone who loves the outdoors and nature, it was tough to be cooped up in like a, you know, an office setting all day. So what I ended up doing was um, getting certified as a scuba diver for the first time when I was still working. I saved up my little sand dollars and I started training to become a scuba diver. And I got my PADI open water certification at Catalina Island. Yay! In, um, oh my gosh, what year did I do that? 2004? And... Oh, that's two years before I got certified. Oh, scuba wow. diver myself. That is so cool. Yeah. So we've both been scuba diving for a long time, you and me. Yeah. But I, yeah. Had a, I had a hiatus from 2007 to 2005, uh, 2015, I mean. It happens. It happens to the best of us. I rarely scuba dive anymore, but because um, I really free dive most of the time as a mermaid. But anyhow, so yeah, I got certified as a scuba diver. And then I found out about the sport of free diving. And it was just such a cool sport that I didn't know anything about really prior. I'd seen things about it, didn't really understand the sport. And then I just really wanted to experience it. So I was down scuba diving, filming on scuba, a, a competition in Grand Cayman about free divers who were, you know, seeing how deep they could go. And I just saw these monofins for the first time. And I thought those were so cool. And so that was when I tried my first monofin. And that was when I knew I was a mermaid and I had to become a mermaid. <laughs> Speaking of free diving, Lyndon, I'm actually in the process of getting certified through Nowie, a friend of mine. 
Well, because of fact, money's tight for me. While well, she offered to help me get certified for free, and I'm working on that too. But of course, even though I plan to be a free diver, doesn't mean it's going to ever replace scuba diving for me at all. Never will. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Congratulations. That's going to be fun to learn, though. Even if scuba is your favorite thing, it's neat to have the skills to understand free diving. It's just a really neat skill. And to be honest with you, I always wanted to learn how to free dive since I was 13 because when I seen Megan um, Heaney, you know, for, Megan I forget Greer. how you pronounce it. Yep. Yeah. I, when I first seen her as a free diving champion, I, that kind of sparked my interest in free diving. That's awesome. She's a, she's a dear friend of mine and she is an amazing woman. She is so incredible and such an inspiration and really obviously was a pioneer in the world of U.S. freediving. She set the first ever U.S. women's record for uh, the constant weight discipline in depth. Okay. I love that. Yeah, that was, that's so cool. And I have another question. How did you get into scuba diving? Oh, that's, that's a fun question. I, when I was a kid, I was growing up where we only had three channels when I was little. We had, you know, ABC, CBS, and we had PBS. And I loved watching all the wildlife documentaries. And my favorite were Jacques Cousteau's underwater adventures and undersea adventures. And they were always scuba diving. And I just thought, oh my gosh, the idea of being able to stay underwater for a long period of time and actually breathe is just a dream. And so the first time I actually did a Discover Scuba course was in my hometown in Pennsylvania. In Amish country, we had this pool that I went to. I lived there. I always smelled like chlorine because I was on the swim team. And they had a Discover Scuba really? course. Yeah, through Smokey's Diver's Den. And they came to our pool. And there's a picture of me and my lips are blue because I was so cold and I have braces <laughs> and I'm like this little kid and I'm so excited. I have a tank on my back and a mask on my head and I'm like, <gasps> like holding my regulator. And um, so I think I was probably like maybe 12 years old when 12 or 13, maybe when I tried it for the first time, just in the pool. You say you're, excuse me, you say you're from Pennsylvania. You're originally from Pennsylvania. I actually am from Philadelphia. I know, which is so cool. Yeah, I grew up first in Bucks County, and then we moved to Lancaster County. So I lived right near Philadelphia when I was really little, like till I was about eight years old. Really? Yeah. I'll tell you how I fe fell in love with diving. When I first seen it on TV, I seen two divers do a backward roll into the water when I was two years old on oh, TV. Wow. And then, and of course... I was also influenced by video games such as Super Mario Brothers, Sonic the Hedgehog, Tomb Raider, and all other video games that have underwater levels in them. I love that. That's so fun. Not to mention t other TV shows and movies, including Into the Blue with, with, with Paul Walker and Jessica Alba. Yeah. It was that, that movie classic. that com it was that movie that convinced me that I should become a certified scuba diver because in 2005 I was originally a lifeguard myself mm -hmm. for the Y. That's I worked there man. from 2005 up until 2020 when I lost my job because of the pandemic. That's great. Yeah, lifeguarding is pretty fun, isn't it? I, I think it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it can be fun, but at the same time, it's also a responsibility too because mm -hmm. you have to always watch the pool though. That's true. That's true. Watching people have fun in the water is fun, though. <laughs> yeah, and of course, the downside to, you know, breath holding, because, you know, we mentioned about free diving, you know, it can lead to shallow water blackout, which, of course, is one of the reasons why it's also prohibited in, in pools, which, of course, lifeguards frown on that a lot. Yeah, that is true. And I can understand true. the reasons. Yeah, I can too. Especially and the if same people thing. are, you know, not 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 as safe with their safety protocols, or they're not trained and they're just trying it. That's a little scary for sure. And the same goes with bringing mer mermaid tails to to pools because of bands, because of drowning accidents. With that, you know, it's interesting though. I don't know of any recorded drownings. 
with a monofin or mermaid tail. Maybe I just never heard about them. I researched, I looked, and I have never actually found evidence of someone drowning in a pool while wearing a monofin or a mermaid tail. I've only heard of stories about mermaid mermaid tail near drownings. Same. Same. Yeah. So it's interesting. That's all I've... You know, it's surprising that it's it's banned just because, I mean, to my knowledge, and maybe there's something out there I just haven't heard. Um, but if both of us, who are very deep in this community, haven't heard about any actual drownings, it is surprising that they are banned so frequently. And you hear about it happening, and people are wondering, you know, where can I go that I can swim with my pod, or where can I go practice in my tail? And so, yeah, it's an interesting thing. Yeah, because the fact I'm part of the Pennsylvania Mermaid Pod myself, I almost ended up joining them over at Boulder Woods, but last year because of because of COVID cases at um, Mermagicon and concerns, my chance of doing that was ultimately canceled. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, there's so many things that have not happened and it's been challenging, especially because of all the COVID stuff. So, yeah, I'm sorry you didn't get to go. It's not like I didn't get to swim my tail. After all, you did see on my Mersona me swimming in action. Yes. <laughs> Which is always the best. And, of course, I also have another question to ask. Mm -hmm. How did you design this monofin, and and how did it take off and become very successful out there with not just Mer Taylor, but now even Thin Folk? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's been so exciting, especially over the past couple of years, to have some of the biggest tail makers creating tails just for the Mermaid Linden monofins. And uh, Mer Taylor was the first. And I remember when Eric called me and was so excited when finally re we released the adult monofins because we had the kids monofins on the market for uh, several years. And then finally, we were able to manufacture and start rolling out the adult products. And that was just a dream come true for me because I'd always dreamed of creating a really comfortable, functional, fast, and um, aesthetically cool looking monofin. And I love how the monofins look. I know that uh, some people prefer a more flowy fluke, you know, that kind of moves more flowy through the water, but I really like having power behind my kick. And so that was part of my consideration in designing the Mermaid Linden monofins, both the kids and the adults. So it took a long time, many, many, many tests with different stiffnesses of plastic for the flukes and different types of straps and covers on the straps and quick release buckles until we really created a design that I felt was ready to go to market. And um, it's taken a long time, really, to build up the reputation of the Mermaid Linden brand. And just like with anything, you have to um, sell the products and market them. Then you have to get good reviews. And since we're on Amazon, it's actually really fun and easy to leave um, reviews for your Mermaid Linden products, which I am grateful for all the positive reviews that everyone out there has left. And I also... Uh, designed these monofins after my own tail. So my original design is actually using something called biomimicry. Bio means life and mimic means to imitate. So biomimicry is imitating nature to solve human problems. In this case, how does a mermaid or a human, I should say, how does a human swim like a mermaid or a merman and how can they do so effectively? And so I looked into nature and I looked to the oceans and I said, who are the fastest fish in the world? I want to swim as fast as they do or try. <laughs> and so lo and behold, the answer were sharks, sailfish, and uh, swordfish who have this kind of crescent-shaped smile that's underneath your chin right now, this, this smile-shaped fluke that- You mean the bar one? 
<laughs> yeah, marlin, sailfish, um, swordfish, they all have really, and tuna fish as well, all are kind of that, that similar type of a shape. And so that was what inspired me to design my very first silicone tail with that shape of a fluke. And then also that shape was handed down into the Mermaid Linden line of products. And I also see that you have a foldable version of this said fit, but only for kids at the moment. I hope an adult version comes down the road because I, because if it does, I would like to hopefully be one of your beta testers for, for, for the adult version. Well, thank you for mentioning that. That is so exciting. And yes, I really hope that we will be able to produce an adult foldable monofin. So that was something I'm, I'm really proud of. I dreamed up the idea of a foldable monofin and one had never been created before. So we actually have uh, a utility patent on the foldable monofin. So what an exciting thing to dream something up create a prototype and now have it to market for the first time in the world. And so I have been asking, um, hey, can guys, can we make an adult monofin that folds too? Because the kids products are really, you know, going very well and people are really enjoying that feature. So I've had a lot of people asking me for the adult foldable and when is it going to come out? And it'll take some time, uh, but I'm hoping that we'll be able to bring that to market sometime in the future. Yeah, because of the fact I have, because of the fact when I go to Cozumel, I have to put this in, I have to carry this with me on the plane and I have my backpack and, and unfortunately the strap of the bag here broke when I got this, when playing this on, playing with it and putting it on my back, this strap broke on this bag here. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, shoot. I might have to send you one so you've got one that, that works or um so what part of it broke i'm curious which part of the strap was it the buckle or what came off just 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 the strap you know just you know the just stitching. you know yeah the stitching came out and the fact there's also holes in the netting for the bag too now oh well it's had a lot of love and use i guess huh <laughs> yeah it did cool. Well, that's good. Now, I'm as glad. as for as for how I got into mermaiding, it was because of my friend Mermaid Moral Opal. Yes, I remember you saying that. Oh, so tell me about your first time ever actually trying on a monofin and going in the pool or in the ocean. I don't know where you were. Tell me your story. Oh, it was actually my. It was, I was invited. To, I I asked a friend of mine if I can use her pool to practice in my tail, and she let me and. That is where you've seen that clip of me flipping these fins at, awesome. at her house awesome. up in the Andorra section of Philadelphia. That's so cool. That's a good friend right there. Mm-hmm. And, and she even shot some video, some of the videos and pictures of me in the water were hers. And of course, when I was playing around in the tail, though, of course... I couldn't hold my breath for long because one, I'm not a free diver yet, and I don't know how to, you know, stay down long while holding my breath, you know, without worrying. Plus, I plus I wasn't going to stay down long anyway since I didn't have no supervision. Oh, I'm yeah, safe, absolutely. Though. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, the, I, safety is so important. It is like the number one thing that I always stress with anybody doing anything in the water, but especially free diving because if you don't have the um, the safety protocol knowledge and the experience, and you don't have a buddy with you. I mean, it's just like scuba diving. You never dive alone. We always have a buddy and with free diving, it's exactly like that. So that's good. Yeah. And of course, as I was mentioning about Mo Opal, she also got me into watching H2O just add water. And then when I discovered Mako mermaids and the fact they had a merman named Zach, that also convinced me that I should be a merman too. That's awesome. I watched all of those shows too. I watched, um, there was a really old series that was also an Australian series called Ocean Girl that I learned yeah, about. Yeah, I remember that one as a, yeah, I remember that one as a child. I used to watch it a lot on Disney Channel. Yes, exactly. And it's, and it's so interesting. And, and coincidentally, Ocean Girl is actually produced by the same production company that produced h2o and nako mermaids and not to mention 
one of the directors of H2O, was also one of the stars of Ocean Girl, Jeffrey Walker. Yes, yes, yes. You you took the words out of my brain, Coral. <laughs> and not to mention, one of the stars of Ocean Girl actually guest starred on Mako Mermaids as Ricky Chadwick's assistant in the final two episodes of so Mako Mermaids, and that would be Alex Pender. Oh, wow. There you go. I did not realize that. That is so cool. Yes. Huh. That makes me want to go and back yeah, and watch and them again. <laughs> Whenever you saw me do those fin flipping, you know, I was on my bed. Uh I wanted to go and, um, you know, flip my fins to content I think would be fun flipping my fins to. Like I like Dive Club because, in fact, it has to do it's also set in Australia. It's about teenage girls who are trying to, you know, find out what happened to their friend and they go scuba diving and then they later, later discovered that the disappearance of their friend is actually connected to to crown jewels from the Rus- Russian Empire, oh. which of course some of them, one of them was actually recovered from a Russian shipwreck off the coast of a town set in Australia. Wow. And then you also have the fact Mako Mermaids and H2O are also reasons why I was flipping my fence to to those shows. And not to mention, when I seen Cobra Kai Season 4, Peyton Liss, who plays Tori, was dressed up as a mermaid. So I had to flip my fence to that one, too. And even Splash. Yeah, absolutely, Splash. That's a classic. That is so cool. Yeah, I haven't seen the Dive Club show yet. I, I co-host... Uh, the Deeper Blue podcast, and we, in the news one time, we announced that that show was going to be premiering, and I thought, oh, you know, Australia, based on all these shows you and I just discussed, Ocean Girl, Mako Mermaids, H2O Just Add Water, and now Dive Club, the Australian people really seem to be excited about things that are aquatic for entertainment, and I love that about about Australian television. I wish especially we had more of that in the here. Australian state. Yeah, especially in the Australian state of Queensland. Yes. Which is where the Great Barrier Reef is located at. And yes, I always want to visit Australia. It's beautiful. It's, I went to visit. It's gorgeous. I, can, I also have another question to ask. What is the d- Deeper Blue podcast you just mentioned? And do you always have many guests on there? Oh, the Deeper Blue podcast, we launched that. So Stephen Whelan, who is the creator and owner of DeeperBlue.com, which is the world's most popular scuba diving, free diving, and just diving related website, um, decided over COVID when we were all in lockdown that like many people, hey, wouldn't it be fun if we started a podcast and this way we could still share diving and ocean news from around the world and stay in touch with the friends and people who we love in the underwater community. So um, Megan Haney Greer and myself are both co-hosts of the Deeper Blue podcast and Jason Elias and Stephen Whelan are the executive producers and creators of the podcast. And it is so much fun to do interviews for this because I get to speak not only to some of my friends who are in the scuba and freediving world, but I also get to speak, I have an excuse to talk to people who I really admire. And a lot of people who I've never really had a chance to talk to in depth, pun intended, about their work in the oceans. And so I got to record, gosh, I think somewhere around 20 some interviews um, over the past couple of years since we launched the podcast and we've won a bunch of awards. Is that still ongoing? Um, it's well, we're on a break right now. Yeah, yeah. sorry, you, you froze for a second. Can you still hear me? Oh, are you still there? Can you? Oh, now you're unfrozen. Yeah, unfrozen. I can hear you. Oh, good. Okay, you froze for a second and I couldn't yeah, hear you. Yeah, that was. Yeah, sorry about that. It's my internet connection and my PC. My PC's old and crappy. Excuse me for that. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so the Deeper Blue podcast is, we've done, gosh, did we do three seasons now? And we're on a break right now. Uh, so stay tuned for more episodes and news about it in the future. But yeah, we're on a little hiatus for now. Well, uh, I was going to say, I was going to say if, 
you ever need another guest to come on, I'd be interested because I would love to talk about me being a merman, me being involved with dive heart and scuba diving as well. I really would like to, I like to, you know, do be, take, I like to, you know, appear on, on the podcast. And plus, I always want to meet Megan anyways, because at the wall, she is one of my free diving heroes, too. Oh, she's amazing. Growing up and in the 90s. Yeah, and I will I will bear that in mind. And thank you for mentioning that, because um, I have no idea what's going to continue with the podcast or if we will continue. I hope we will. Um, but we've been on a break for a little bit, and we've just been waiting to hear back from the producers on what they'd like to do next, because things are getting busy again. You know, things have opened up more. And I understand. Yeah. So we'll see what happens, but I will absolutely keep that in mind. And thank you for offering to be an interviewee on our podcast. Yes. And of course... I love this monofin, as I mentioned. My friend Astra Dragon, who is also a friend of of Merle Opal, she when I when I told you she she loves her monofin because she she caught her now her her boyfriend, who is Merle's brother, mm-hmm. got it for her one day, and well. She actually said she likes the monofin. She she praises it so much, Lyndon. Oh, that's awesome. That is that's a very sweet gift. Her boyfriend's very smart. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and not to mention one of my friends from Dive Heart, who's also autistic. He he's not interested in mermaid. He just wants a monofin of his own. So I suggested this to his father. That's very sweet of you. Thank you for recommending it. Yeah, it is. It's a great first monofin. You know, it's it's much more affordable than some of the others out there. It's pretty lightweight. It's very comfortable compared to most monofins. So I know I'm biased, but I really do highly recommend it as a first monofin for anybody. Yes, and plus I'm a beginner merman. And, and speaking of the deeper blue podcast if you ever had if you had you ever interviewed the founder of dive heart jim elliott i have not interviewed him i'd have to look in the archives and see if anyone else has interviewed him but we should he would be another yeah. excellent candidate yeah because i highly recommend you you interview jim elliott because i've been on some podcasts like 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 my man Andy, the Northern Diver, he had me on his podcast two years ago, and I recommended Dive Heart to him. That's awesome. Yeah, so tell me more, because I know you've been involved with Dive Heart for how long now have you been working with them? Since 2016. Amazing. Um, I'll be right back, Lyndon. Let me just go get, let me go get um, one of the Dive Heart shirts. Oh, Awesome. Oh, you're back. All right. This is one of the Dive Heart shirts. Oh, nice. So diveheart.org. So for everyone out there watching, check out the Dive Heart website. And they do some really amazing work. Yeah, there we go. Search Dive Heart and imagine the possibilities. So tell me about your experience with Dive Heart. I'd love to hear. That's been good. I've been on three trips with them so far, and I'm going on my fourth. That is awesome. And this is this is your Cozumel trip that's coming up. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yep. And of course, Cozumel is where I, where of course is also the home of Jules Diver. Yes. Yes. She created her mermaid courses and classwork down there. I've known Jules for over a decade. I've known Jules since, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember what year we met. Um, And we had uh, an opportunity where I actually went down to go see her in Cozumel and we dived outside of the Atlantis submarines. And it was a really cool experience. And they also use the pool at the hotel I'm going to be staying at, Hotel Cozumel. Oh, perfect. 
And yes, Hotel Cozumel is where I'm going to be staying there. And and let me let me give you a brief history on Dive Heart, um, Lyndon. Please. Jim Elliott found it in, in 2001. In 2001, 21 years ago, because it was born out of a concept of because of that Jim has a blind daughter. Of course, he was used to be a blind ski instructor, and he um, thought it would apply with um, thought it would be a good idea to apply it to scuba diving, and they're based out of Downers Grove Amazing. in Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. Wow. Brr, brr, brr. Cold place to dive. <laughs> yeah, um, they do dive heart experiences at at pools, and then they also sometimes do open water experiences up in a quarry. Mm -hmm. And of course, I didn't go in 2021 mainly because of the pandemic. Mm, that makes sense. And And of course, during that last trip, they also were, were, there was also a documentary that was filmed, which of course will be premiering later this month. Oh, that's exciting. You know what, Lyndon? I think maybe you should join us one day. Yeah. Join us on Dive Heart trips. That would be amazing. I've been hearing about Dive Heart for a very, very long time. There's a, there's a big scuba convention that happens almost every year, obviously, uh, COVID prevented it. You from mean happening. DEMA? DEMA you, show, yeah. You mean D? Yeah. Yeah, I attended DEMA virtually in 2020. Oh, there you go. So I have, I, well, I didn't miss a DEMA show in person um, for, gosh, I started going in 2005. Um, so yeah, it's been a lot of DEMA shows with a lot of amazing memories and seeing friends from all around the world in the dive industry. So it's, it's an amazing show. And I also, I've been to um, Beneath the Sea in, in Secaucus since 2017. Oh, cool. I haven't done Beneath the Sea. Well, I think I heard they're coming back next year. It, it was canceled in 2020, 2021, and this year because of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. It's been tough for a lot of people and the dive industry suffered a lot because of the travel uh, restrictions everywhere, like with many industries in the kind of travel and um, leisure sectors. But we're really hoping that now things are going to start improving again. And of course, my return to diving started at Disney World at, at Epcot and Dive Quest. But of course, during my last trip, which was during the time of the recent Cozumel trip when the documentary was being filmed, I couldn't go diving at, at COP because it's currently unavailable because of the pandemic. Because mm. even the Disney, because even the cast members who work at the aquarium for at Epcot and run Dive Quest say they haven't heard anything on when, if and when Disney will restore this experience. Mm, that's a bummer. Well... I guess we'll have to wait and see. And of course, maybe it's a good thing I didn't go to Cozumel because I found out 15 people, some of them I knew from past trips, had came down with COVID during during the said trip. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, I have managed not to get, I'm going to knock on wood, this desk, my head, I have not had COVID. Uh, yet to my knowledge at all I've been very isolated and same with me yeah and I don't want it because I've I been wearing I've been lungs Ooh, lungs we need our lungs yeah yeah but of course of course there's of course there's a the benefit of the vaccines and those pills that they start launching out so it won't be as bad as as it was during the beginning of the pandemic and of course during the early days of the pandemic in January, I ended up c catching the flu. And of course, I've been wearing masks. I vow to wear masks for the rest of my life, especially during fall and winter months when it's cold, flu, and COVID season. Yeah, that's it's very smart. It's very smart to do. You know, whatever keeps you protected and safe and healthy and happy and able to do the things you want to do and travel, it's do what you need to do. That's what I say. 
And of course, the reason why I chose that little TikTok video, I tagged you in it, it's because one, I chose the Pokemon Primarina, which of course is the final evolution for the Gen 7 starter Poplio, which of course, it, it evolves into a mermaid-themed Pokemon. Oh, cool. I've never played Pokemon, so I'm not familiar with all the characters and the, the themes and worlds. Yeah, and speaking of Pokemon, they, there were episodes of the anime where one of the main characters, Misty, dressed up as a mermaid. And of course, in the fictional Pokemon world, they also have, and in, and in some anime, they have little mini scuba tanks with small cylinders that the protagonists just pull out of thin air and put in their mouths and it allows them to breathe underwater. Oh, wow. And That's traditional cool. scuba gear as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know that doesn't really exist in real life. Mm, well, yeah, but that's part of the fun of video games. <laughs> you can do and, all kinds and, of I'm, I'm talk, things. I was talking about in the anime, me, I mean. Oh, in the anime. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, so I'm curious. That's I have what a I question. Meant. I'm, I'm curious for you. I have a question. Um, of all of the places you've ever scuba dived, because I know you've you've done a lot of diving over the course of your, your diving career, where's your favorite place so far you've ever scuba dived? If you, we, if you want to say besides Cozumel, I'd have to say Dutch Springs. But of course, Dutch Springs, well, the owner of it recently sold it to a development company, and of course, and he's retiring, and of course, if it's reopened, it's going to be under new management, and as a result, Dutch Springs is open, but no free diving and no mermaiding allowed at the moment. Just all open water swimming, just mainly scuba diving. It's also where I got certified to the scuba at. And even Merle herself learned how to get scuba dive herself there. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, Dutch Springs, um, I think that was not far from where I lived in Lancaster County. It was actually located in Lehigh. It was located in Le It's located in Lehigh Valley. Oh, there you go. Cool. Yeah, I had never actually made it to Dutch Springs. You never did. Mm -mm. No, nope. no, I because I didn't. I wasn't scuba diving officially when I still lived in Pennsylvania because I went to college in Boston and then I moved from Boston to LA and I got certified in LA and I've just been here ever since. So how warm is the water waters on the beaches at LA? Are they always cold? Yeah, it's cold because we, we actually get the current coming down from Alaska. So the water comes from the north and typically it's pretty chilly. Like the warmest I've ever felt the surface of the ocean here is like the low 70s. And that's on like a really hot summer or fall I day. I take it you have to wear seven mil wetsuits. Oh, well, I actually, I have, um, it depends on the type of wetsuit. For scuba diving, yes, I'm wearing a seven mil with like a two mil hooded vest. And I actually typically wear a dry suit um, when I scuba dive here. When I'm free diving, I have an open cell, it's called an open cell wetsuit. That's a free diving wetsuit that has this really, you know, incredibly insulating rubber on the inside of it. And um, Oceaner is my favorite wetsuit company for freediving wetsuits. And they make super wonderful, very warm wetsuits. Yeah, I always want, I always, as I said, I look forward to the day I get my own freediving gear. Yeah, it's, it's so much fun to just kind of dive minimalistically. And I'm so excited because this coming weekend, I'm going on Saturday, I'm going to go to scuba show in Long Beach, which is happening again for the first time since the pandemic. And I'm working at the Reef Check booth because I'm the co-chair of the Reef Check Foundation now. And then Sunday, we're going out on a board retreat for Reef Check and we're going to uh, a lot of people are going to be scuba diving. I'm going to be free diving <laughs> and I'm bringing my mono fins for people to try out if they want to. And we're going to do some transect lines and surveys on the Rocky Reef systems. Do you still scuba dive? And uh, that's another question. Do you still scuba dive besides free dive? Do you still scuba dive occasionally? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, I scuba dive. Let's see. I've scuba dived um, on a trip 
uh, not super recently because of the pandemic, but uh, before the pandemic, I went to Hawaii and I did scuba dive there and I scuba dived down um, in Colombia off the coast of this little island called San Andres. And um, yeah, so I scuba dive on occasion still because I worked with Patty back in the, the early 2000s and mid 2000s. Um, I was I was working as a Patty model. So I used to be in a bunch of their educational materials. I, as I said, I always and ever 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 tried scuba diving in one of your own tales. <laughs> I tried scuba. I don't recommend monofins and tanks. Uh, it actually really hurt my neck and my back because when you're mermaiding, your your spine is kind of serpentine. You know, it's moving like this, and if you have a tank on your back, it it doesn't really let your body move the way it needs to. Um, when you're doing that motion. So I don't recommend it. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. And besides, I wouldn't do that in the open water. I'd probably try that in the pool. Much safer. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I did a, a shoot down in the Bahamas many years ago now, and I think it was 2009. And I actually mermaided with a scuba tank on, and I had this full mermaid wetsuit, this gold mermaid wetsuit. And um, we did a couple of days where I was, you know, scuba diving with a tank in this mermaid suit, which had, you know, the monofin and everything. It was all one big suit. And yeah, it really hurt my neck and my back. So after a couple of days, I was like, I think I'm just going to free dive now if I'm in the suit. So <laughs> yeah, yeah from my, personal, idea. my experience, it's not a very uh, good physical experience <laughs> not good for the back yeah and a, yeah and i've seen pictures of people with mermaid tails and scuba gear on on the internet and if have you ever watched alvin and the chipmunks when you were younger i don't mean like that old 60s cartoon i'm talking about the ones from the 80s because there's oh. one episode that actually has the chipettes and they're parodying charlie's angels and they're chasing a jewel thief and a jewel thief the jewel thief actually has a tuxedo, which is actually a wetsuit. He dives into the water with scuba gear on, and they're chasing him with with um, jet skis, and they pull out tails, and they don scuba gear to dive after him, and they oh, all wow. swim in mermaid tails. No kidding. I missed that episode. I know. I, th I definitely saw um, those that series when I was younger, I think, but I do not remember that episode. I must not have seen it. That's pretty cool, though. <laughs> I think it's called Alvy's Alvy's Angels. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, that and of course, Alvy's Angels. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna fast forward. I'm gonna show you a clip of, of what I was talking about. And of course, you say you don't recommend diving with a monofin on. Not with a tank. This yeah. This is the scene. This is what I was talking about. See, the girls pull off their tails. Oh my gosh, there they go. <laughs> Chasing the oh, bad yeah. guy down. Yeah, yeah. And of course, and of course, as divers, there's also science to it because they use their scuba tanks and they also, you know, to rise up to the surface quickly, which of course, in reality, and they also talk underwater, which of course is impossible because, because of, you know, decompression sickness and not to mention that the tanks are not powerful enough to lift that heavy cage up to the surface. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. The things they can get away with in cartoons, right? And look at them in a cage yeah. with the sharks. That's so funny. Yeah, and of course, this is what I was talking about right here. Look at that. You agree, you agree from, from scuba science this would be impossible? Oh, completely impossible. Oh, they would have just been so bent. <laughs> they just rocketed to the surface. Yeah, no, that's impossible. Uh-oh. I just want, yeah, 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 don't <laughs> worry, they, they went in the end, don't worry, I just wanted to show you, just wanted to show you that, because that's what I was talking about. That is so cool, so the mermaids win? Yeah, they're not really mermaids, they're just, they're just pr pretending to be, you know, parodies of Charlie's angels. Awesome, well, hey, I love it, maybe they're Charlie's angel fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the chipettes. <laughs> And they also did go diving in the movie, The Chipmunk Adventure. That is so funny. I never knew that the chipmunks had diving in their, in their TV and films. 
Who knew? <laughs> yeah, it, it was just the smaller chipettes, though. But of course, I'm not talking about the live action ones. They they are like the size of real chipmunks, whereas the ones in the cartoon are actually more like the size of human children. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. It's cool. Yeah, it's impossible in real life, though. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. 100%. There's, there's no way any of that would have worked out, but it's funny. There was a wetsuit company and I, I don't know who it was who did design uh, a tuxedo wetsuit. Did you ever see that? It was really expensive. Um, I think we reported no, I about it. I think it was in our deeper blue podcast news one time that it was like, and I remember Stephen Whelan, the, the executive producer and founder of deeper blue saying like, this is like my ultimate dream to have a a tuxedo that's actually a wetsuit so I can feel like James Bond. It's like childhood fantasy stuff. <laughs> he was talking about that. And I feel like this wetsuit was like several thousand dollars or something crazy. Um, I would have to like do a big search to find it. But yeah, it does exist. It's out there. Yeah, it's, it's cool. That That's kind of cool to hear. And about this jacket you see me with, got at the Adventure Aquarium. Um, if you're wondering about when you, when I mentioned Finfolk earlier, one of the one of the you ever heard of Wands and Wishes? No. This came from the Adventure Aquarium when when the mermaids of Wands and Wishes were there. Oh, that's so cool! Tell me about Wands and Wishes. They're a professional mermaid. They're they're a professional. Yeah, they're a mermaid trope based out of of um, Colorado. Oh gosh, maybe and look I what do. It's, maybe I do know about them. I think maybe Ray, I followed them. Mermaid at heart. You know what this says? That's adorable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I meant by thin folk, the wands and wishes people, wands and wishes ladies use thin folk tales. Oh, good. Yeah, the, I love the girls at Finfolk too. I, I love all the tail makers. I love getting to know the story. One of them, one of them is also one of the mermaids that actually works with them, though. I didn't meet them in person because they were at, at Mermagicon at the time I went to the aquarium, but they came the weekend after. And I only met her on Facebook through the mermaiding group I'm part of, Mermaid Mania, Mermaid Sky. Does that name ring a bell? I, I don't know that I've heard of a mermaid sky. I follow so many mermaids and mermen on Instagram. It's hard to keep track of them. There are so many now. Well, and then there's also mermaid si sirenity. Serenity. Yeah, mermaid mm -hmm. serenity. I met her. She was in the hot tub as she was finishing up her dive. Cool. That sounds like a nice cozy place to finish a long dive. Yeah, it was the first time since the, before the pandemic I went into Shark Realm. And yes, that's one of my favorite places to dive at the Adventure Aquarium. I am a, a volunteer there. Oh, that's cool. I'm, I'm working on getting back in there, you know, for the summer months and getting back in there so I can prepare for getting back to being comfortable because I wasn't in the water for like a long period of time because of the pandemic. Yeah, I understand that. I feel that way and too. I, it's crazy how long. And I was kind of struggling. What I had mastered my buoyancy and my air consumption, and then suddenly that all regressed because of being out of the water for a long time because of the pandemic. Yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? I uh, I'm, I'm so so excited to go dive this weekend, but I have not been open ocean free diving in. A really long time, only a, a few times, a handful of times over the course of the pandemic, did I actually get to go and free dive out in the ocean. So I'm really looking forward to stretching my gills again. <laughs> yeah, same here. Um, and I'm not ready to swim in the ocean in my tail just yet, though, because I need to get mermaid trained before even doing that. And I can't even do that alone either. Yeah, that's, it's good to get training in it. And it is, it's, it's different when you're dealing with currents and, you know, different elements and thermoclines in the open ocean and everything else. It just affects your breath hold and your psychology and your physiology very differently from just being in a swimming pool. Yeah, I, I want to show you something. See my socks here? They're, they're 
I I wear the yeah, these are these are nylon socks. I wear I wear these under my tail when I'm swimming in the water or scuba diving. And of course I also wear my Mer Taylor leggings. Oh, underneath that's awesome. my wetsuit. Yeah, and that helps you get in and out of wetsuits easily too. It's a it's a great tool. That's awesome. And, and it's also good to use with your tail too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Leggings help I plan to get in and out of things. <laughs> I plan to I plan to use I plan to get myself a um a um the guppy is just their training tail. I plan to get myself the um the Mer Taylor um gup the Mer Taylor um I plan to get one of those those scuba knit tails, but of course they use Mer Taylor's own fins. Oh, not exactly. Oh yeah, the fantasy not, fins. Yeah. I I don't plan to get the yeah I plan to get one of the fantasy fins because I I'm in love with the Caribbean dream tail. That's the design I have on my tail. I have that one too. Yeah, because the whimsy. I plan to get myself a whimsy one of these days. Oh, cool. I plan to get I plan to get the whimsy Caribbean dream tail one of these days, Lyndon. I plan to. That's exciting. And having it's neat to have options too, you know, for different things. Sometimes you want the really easy tail, sometimes you want the the more serious, flowy tail and I don't fun. plan to go with any silicone tails unless I'm part of, say, Wants and Wishes or another mermaid trope where I have to wear it. Besides, I'm not ready to wear a silicone just yet. They're heavy. Does it take pr Yeah, I know. Are they, do does it take practice and time to wear a mono fit, wear, wear that kind of tail, Lyndon? I mean, I think so. It's hard for me to say simply because the first tail I ever had, oh yeah, that's so pretty. That's, yeah, the, that's, the, that's the whimsy version. That's the that's the fantasy whimsy version of the tail I have. And of course the leggings, it's also in the same pattern. And I'll tell you how my Mersona was born. It oh, was do born tell. Out, <laughs> it, was, it was born out of my love for Philadelphia sports. Oh, there you go. Like the Phillies, the Eagles, the Flyers, the Sixers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I grew up with I grew up hearing though. I never paid attention to sports unless it was swimming though. <laughs> and yes, I also like swimming too. Yeah. Well, let's just say this merman frequents land to go watch sporting events, but also still lives in the sea. There you go. Yeah, I've never been one for terrestrial sports. I, I never was good at playing them or participating in them. I'm pretty clumsy on land. So the why, it was always water. <laughs> the why I worked for, well, they did have a kid's swim team. I was the only one, the only adult who swam on it. You know, I don't want to sound crazy, but I always swam against the kids just for fun. Not to necessarily help them win. It was also to see how good they were, too. That's and I kind of acted as a mentor to them as well. Do you have a favorite have, swim stroke? Do you like one of them more than the others? Freestyle, your freestyle and butterfly, which is why I'm good at um, which is why I was good at um, which is why I'm good at using the monofin. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's great. That's how I started too. I was I was a backstroker when I competed and a butterflyer, and yeah, the the movement does come easily if you're used to doing a butterfly swim stroke you know how to move your body properly with a fin on. So that's awesome that you had that experience too. And I did, and I did try a, a fitness, a fitness mono fin once on when I was swimming laps one day at my, at my former job. It belonged to a man who tried to start a, um, a master swim team there, but it didn't work out. And he also left because he broke the rules and then, and then in 2017, he tragically passed away. Oh, no. That's very sad. Yep. Now, all I have to say is about, about mermaiding. I love it. I love mermaiding. If it wasn't for my friend, I would never have gotten into it. And, well, 
and I would never have discovered you. And of course, I also had that interview with um. You ever heard of Trina Mason? Mm, the name isn't ringing a bell. She's also a mermaid, but she's also a diver. She's not a free diver, though. She has tales of her own, too. Does she have a mermaid name? Trina the Mermaid. Trina the Mermaid. Gosh, there's so many now. I might, again, I may follow her um, on Instagram, and I'm just not sure because I follow thousands of people. It's hard to keep track of everybody. I feel like every day there are more and more mermaids and mermen, which is amazing. Uh, my, before we go, have you, I have a couple more questions. What was it? You ever been to other, ever been to mermaiding conventions like the California Mermaid Convention, Mermagicon? I've never gone to any of the mermaid conventions and, um, I've been invited to a bunch and usually they're happening in the past. They were always happening when, I was in kind of a, a busy season. And so I had so many bookings, I was never able to actually go to one of the conventions. Um, so no, I haven't been to one yet. Well, you see the owner, of the, the one of the organizer of MerMagicCon, she also mentioned she that, that you trained her and others at the dive bar. Oh, Mermaid, yeah. Mermaid Rachel, I, I went to the Mermaid to the California Mermaid Convention online in 2020. Yes, I, that, it's so funny. We realized it was like 10, 10 or 11 years ago. I can't even remember now. It's so many years ago. Um, but yeah, Mermaid Rachel is so sweet. And the California Mermaid Convention seems to be just exploding with popularity and really growing. So I'm, I'm so proud of her and just all the other mermaids and mermen. She's trained over the years and Dive Bar has been, uh, a, a big deal up in Sacramento. So I applaud all of her efforts and everything she's done to keep the mermaid thing going up there. And speaking of the, um, speaking of the California you know, Mermaid Convention, it's also how I met the little girl named Mermaid Aurora, who has the same tail as me and also uses your mono thing. Oh, that's so fun. Cool. Yeah. And, I appreciate, I definitely, I definitely am happy to see the people wear the same tail as me and have the same monofin. This is who I speak of. Oh yeah, I can just barely see. It's kind of hard to see. Cool. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> so yeah. Cute. And she's also an actress too. And very nice. That's awesome. So I actually have another appointment. So if you have one more question, I got time for one more mm -hmm. question. What would you have? What, what advice would you have for those who have disabilities and want to get into mermaiding or diving in general? Mm. I would say that practice, practice, practice. And the best thing any of us can do, whether you have disabilities or you don't, is to surround yourself with people who have common interests and who love and support the things you do. And you can have safety buddies, you can have practice buddies, pod members, people to travel with, people to dive with together and experience fun things because, you know, you can do things on your own and it's fun, but diving, it's never safe to do on your own. So I think it's about surrounding yourself with a community of people and friends who have similar interests and you can be safe when you practice and do the things that you love to do in the water. That's my best advice. That's good. And thanks for watching everyone. Thank you for, 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 for watching this interview. Stay tuned for when it will be posted on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for having me on. And I hope everyone has a fantastic day. <laughs> yes. I agree with you, Lyndon. <laughs> Bye. I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. It was a pleasure interviewing Lyndon and what she had to offer during this interview. And... 
if you want to follow Brendan, I'll be sure to post all of her handles, such as her YouTube channel, Instagram, etc., in the description below. In the meantime, this is Laura saying, thanks for watching, everyone! You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, and TikTok. Remember, it's time!